This is my portable PD bench power supply, a surprisingly capable bench supply that is powered using USB-C power delivery and costs less than $12 including shipping. In this video I'm going to show you how to make it and how to use it. USB-C power delivery or PD is a USB-C standard that can be used to supply up to 100 watts of power but I think it's often misunderstood. While it does support various different voltages, you can't set a specific voltage with PD. It is limited to five different voltage levels. Even at that, not all supplies can provide all of these. For example, Mac chargers only support five, nine, and 20 volts. The device being powered by PD negotiates with the power supply to take the voltage level that suits it best. But with a bench supply, you usually want to have exact control over the voltage and you also want to be able to limit the current, something you can't do with a PD supply. While PD can take a power supply's current capability into consideration when negotiating with the supply, it does not limit the current in any way. It's a check that the supply will be able to provide the current the device needs. But with this build, you can get the convenience of being able to use a PD power source, even a compatible battery bank, with the features you'd expect from a more typical power supply, including being able to boost to higher voltages than PD normally supports. The first thing you'll need for this build is a way of negotiating with a USB-C PD power supply. In a previous video, I took a look at several different options available for doing this. Each have their own advantages, but the one I picked for this build is the one based on the IP2721 IC, which is the same one I used for my TS100 Flexi friend. It's a good choice because it's cheap, it only costs $2 delivered, and its behavior is well suited for the project. The IP2721 can be configured to effectively take the highest voltage that the PSU offers, which is good for this use case. Just make sure you have the switch set to high. The main part of this project is the ZK 4KX Book Boost module. This contains the display and the controls for using the power supply. This module will allow us to convert the voltage we get from the PD supply to whatever we require, even including higher voltages. These types of modules are not new, but they are more typically seen in projects such as converting old PC power supplies into bench supplies. The ZK4KX is the cheapest one of these type of modules that I came across. I only paid $7.50 including delivery for mine, and while it does feel fairly cheap, I was actually quite surprised at the features it had, which I'll cover later in this video. The more expensive ones have different interfaces and also support higher power, but remember that you will still be limited by the amount of power your PD supply can provide. The final things I used were a couple of banana jack sockets, which would typically be what is used for a bench power supply, so it will work with standard cables, and then finally a switch for easily being able to shut off the voltage to the power supply module. For both the sockets and the switch, make sure you get ones that can handle the currents that you will be using with the supply. Some of the cheaper ones won't be able to do enough. You will also need some wire. I use stranded 22 AWG. For a case to house everything, I ended up modifying one I found on Thingiverse. I'll link to both the original and my modified one in the description. You don't need to use a 3D printer though. Any large enough box should do the job. I did buy this one from AliExpress to see what it would be like, but it has not arrived yet. There are some things you could do to potentially improve the build, and I'll talk about them later in this video. To actually use the supply, you'll also need a PD-capable power supply for the input. I'll link to a few in the description, but basically any will do. You will also need some leads to connect the supply to your projects. After printing the case and making sure everything fit okay, it was now time for assembly, which was actually really straightforward. The output of the PSU module should be connected directly to the two banana jack sockets. I connected ground from the IP2721 module directly to the in minus terminal of the PSU module. VCC of the IP2721 is first connected to the switch and then the other pin of the switch is connected to the in plus terminal of the PSU module. 
I used crimping tools to add ferrules and connectors to the wire for a secure connection, but I guess you could use some solder either. Just be careful you don't melt any of the plastic of the jacks or the switch. For the IP2721 module I also added a screw terminal, it's just a standard 5mm one. It's also recommended that you do not solder wire before using them with a screw terminal. I used some hot glue to hold the IP2721 module in place, and I also added a dab to the ZK4KX as it was a tiny bit loose. And that's the build completed. Before you start using the supply, there are some things you should configure, but these will be saved on the PSU module, so you'll only have to do them once. To enter into configuration mode, click and hold the UI button until the screen changes. To navigate the configuration options, you click the SW button. The full range of options are listed in the module's description, but I will just cover the ones I feel are most important. First thing I recommend doing is to change the default behavior for when you power it on. It inexplicably enables the output automatically by default. I can't see why anyone would want this, but thankfully it's configurable. On the Open Config option, click and hold the encoder wheel in till the option changes to Off. Next, we want to set an overall power limit to the module. This is especially useful if your PD supply is a lower wattage one, as it will stop the PSU module taking more power than the PD supply has. On the OPP option, set the wattage accordingly using the rotary encoder. Pressing in the encoder will change the digit that you're changing. One really important thing about this is that the power limit you're setting seems to apply to the output power of the module, not the input. A certain amount of power is used by the module when converting the voltages. This particular one claims to be 88% efficient, meaning in order to supply 10 watts of power on the output, it may need to use up to 11.5 watts on the input. I'm not sure how much I would trust that figure either, so I think you would be best off limiting this to 80% of what your supply is capable of. It is also mentioned in the product page that 35 watts is the most the module can do with natural heat dissipation, or in other words, without a fan. After that, I think it's worth lowering the temperature that the module will cut off at. By default, it's 110 degrees, which seems a little cozy to me. On the OTP option, although that doesn't look like a T to me, you can change the temperature limit here using the rotary encoder. I set mine to 80 degrees, which is the minimum. To exit the configuration menu, click and hold the UI button again. Next, let's take a look at how to use it. The main thing you'll want to do with a power supply is to set the voltage and the current limit. To do this, you press the UI button once. The first thing you configure is the voltage, which is the same controls with the rotary encoder as before. To move to setting the current, just press the UI button again and use the rotary encoder. To exit this menu, press the UI button again, or alternatively, it will time out after a few seconds. Back at the main menu, to enable the output, press in the rotary encoder. While the output is enabled, you can make adjustments to the voltage by rotating the encoder, but I would use this only for minor adjustments as it's quite slow. To change what is displayed on the screen, you can single press the SW button to change the bottom row to either amps, watts, amp hours, or the enabled time. To change the top row, you have to press and hold the SW button, and you can change between voltage out, voltage in, and temperature. So, is it any good? It's certainly better than I originally expected it to be when I bought the stuff for it. Paired with a PD power bank, this is a really compact solution that you could use anywhere. The interface is just okay though. Given the type of display it is, I'm not sure how else it could be handled, but I often forgot which button does what, and the flashing character indicating what digit you are changing makes it feel quite unresponsive. The voltage accuracy is pretty good, at least when verifying using this crappy multimeter, although the load tester also backs this up. The voltage does drop slightly under heavier loads though. Nothing too crazy, but it is a little worse than my Tenma power supply. The overcurrent protection does kick in when you expect it to, 
Although it does output some voltage in the state, which I wasn't expecting, but the Tenma does this too. As for Ripple, don't worry, according to the listing, it has low Ripple. I don't have a scope. If I was building this project again, I would consider making a few changes. First, the 3D case could definitely be improved. The modified version I made is okay, but I'm no 3D designer. The main issue is the half-assed job I did for a place to put the IP2721 module. It's not even close to being a good fit. I just made sure it was big enough to not be a problem and I let hot glue fix the issues from there. You'll also notice that I have stickers indicating positive and negative when I could have done this in the 3D print. When I was modding the case, I didn't think I would need those indications because I thought the color of the jacks would be enough, but that's not the case and more about that in a minute. Also, it would be nice if the base of the case was press fit into the rest of it. The current design is for M2.5 bolts, but I don't have any long enough. It currently stays in place just out of friction, but that might not be the same for all printers. The banana jacks I got are nice quality, but I think you might be better off going for one similar in style to the ones on the Tenma, because if you get a cable that is shrouded like these ones, you have to screw off the plastic cover, and this is why I need to mark which one is which. I'm not sure if the switch is really all that useful. The IP2721 module would still be powered, which isn't that big of a deal, but you'll probably just plug out the bench supply when you're done with it anyways. And finally, to increase the power you can put through the module, you would have to find a way of integrating a fan, both into the case design and find a way of powering it, maybe through a separate book converter. So I think this is a useful device to have. It was cheap to buy the parts for, and it was quick to put together. Ignoring the time it takes to print the case, you could easily have this built in an hour. So I think if you have a PD power source already and you want to get an inexpensive bench power supply, I think this is actually a pretty good option. I would be interested in hearing other people's thoughts on it though. A good place to discuss this would be on my Discord, where you'll find plenty of other helpful makers there. I'd also like to give a huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping to support the channel and the weird things that I like to build. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you again. Bye bye.